So in today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the piercings that you don't see very often. These aren't the rarest of the rare, but they certainly are uncommon piercings that you don't see very often. But why is it that you don't see them very often? And it is generally because they do not work. So the first one that I want to start with is hip piercings. Hip piercings were probably far, far more common, maybe about like 10 years ago. You saw so many more of them. I definitely know they were a big thing within like scene kids loved hip piercings. I saw them on guys, I saw them on girls. What did I see? I saw that they never fucking worked. However, this has a lot to do with the fact that it was more commonly seen that people were using PTFE bars instead of like doing dermals on hips. And you will have a lot, a lot better success with dermals on the hippies. But it was just such a common thing to see the hip piercings done with PTFE bars and they just looked gronk, to put it lightly. They looked so disgusting. All of them were red, raw, pussy. They never were doing well. It's a piercing that I wouldn't perform because you just know you're essentially giving this person some pretty hectic scarring for absolutely no reason for them to have a piercing that is going to reject, that is going to look disgusting while they have it. It doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's piercings were infected, but it generally meant that most of these piercings were rejecting. The body was not accepting the piercing and that's why it was so red and it was just trying to push the piercing out. I would say that one's more uncommon for multiple reasons because it just isn't really seen that much anymore. It does have a lot to do with the fact that a lot more pierces are like getting with it and realizing that like it shouldn't be done. Even dermals on hips aren't that common. So having dermals on your hips, that's still a pretty uncommon piercing and it can still be done, but it really just depends on clothing, I guess, as well. That's another thing that has come in within, I guess, the last 10 years is that high-waisted everything is a thing. That wasn't really a big thing like 10 years ago. The fact that high waist is in, everything's gonna be rubbing on that area constantly. And even if it were a dermal, it is likely to reject as well. So yeah, these are all things to think about, but yeah, that's probably why that one isn't so common I would say. Going on from that you have your little back dimples. I know when I was younger we'd be like oh my god the sex dimples. That's what people would call them. You'd want your sex dimples pierced and what they meant by piercing them was putting two dermals in the dimples or to create the illusion that you have the dimples because not everyone has them. Like even having back dimples aren't that common. So the fact that you can put two dermals in there to make it look like that is pretty cute. It is a hella, hella cute piercing. I love it so much. It can be one that can reject as well. It really just depends on how much flesh you've got there, how much you've got for that dermal to hang on to. Some people's skin is just too tight to do them and not everyone can get them, but if you get them, my God, I'm jealous. They are some of my favorites. My skin is far, far, far too taut. It just like, there is no grabbing anything. Not saying I don't have fat around that area. I definitely do, but it really comes down to the like, the stretch of your skin. So another one we have are surface navel piercings. So these are either seen above a standard navel piercing or they can also go below horizontal. The one below that's horizontal really has to be done with a staple bar. And even then there is a possibility that it could reject. Again, these aren't ones that I really advocate for getting just because the rejection rate be so high. However, if your body is good with a bottom navel, you could have success with these piercings. No one can really say whether your body's going to accept it or not. Then we have the third eye piercing. This can either be done with a dermal or it can be done with a staple as well. Another one that if you're lucky enough to keep it, then that's amazing. There isn't a lot of flesh there, just like your teardrop dermals. However, this area is generally more taut. There can be a higher chance of rejection. However, I have seen some of these last. The most important thing is that it isn't too taut. So like the skin isn't too tight. Me, my life, this is everything. I can't even like pick up any skin. I've just, 
a very tight skinned lady. If there isn't really anything to grab, you're not gonna have a good time with one of these. There really needs to be enough flesh there for the dermal to sit in nice and flush with the room for it to have the flesh grow through the feet as well. It needs to be able to do all that. If it's too tight, the body will just sort of push it out. And that's something that you do see. So you've got to have like the right amount. It really depends client to client. We've got a horizontal lip. Uh, this one, don't advise. Done with a curved bar and it has a hella, hella high rejection rate. The scarring ain't that cute. It can sort of change the shape of your lip with like the scarring being on top of the lip and you can like see that all the time. If you've had it for a very short amount of time, you probably won't get too bad scarring. However, if you kept it in for as long as you could or you kept it in until it was like, let me out of here, I want the fuck out, then you probably will have some pretty hectic scarring. I've seen some very scarred and it is something that draws your eye to it. Not that it looks like a cold sore, cold sore, not that it looks like a cold sore or anything, but it's some sort of lump on your lip that people might be like, oh, is that all right? You know how some people do that, which they shouldn't, but they might just be looking at the fact that it's like, are you healthy? Is everything okay? It might just be like a compassionate question, but it could be offensive if you fucking hate those scars. It's a different scarring to around the lip piercings as opposed to like, it is your lip, it's on your lip. We have the anti-eyebrow piercing. This is another one like in the realm of the hip time. I feel like when the hip piercings were big, so were anti-eyebrow piercings. They went off and people looked like someone had punched them in the face. Because there's some little blood vessels in that area, you generally will bruise. Some people bruise a lot worse than others. These piercings are just known for their absolute ridiculous rejection rate. I get it, the idea of them looks cute, but actually having them, not cute at all. If you see what they look like in person, generally they look pretty, pretty fucked. And that is because just like the hip piercing, they are wanting to reject, they don't wanna be there. They're so red and irritated constantly. People try everything, but it's just the fact that like your body doesn't want it. I don't think I've ever seen one successfully make it through. Like it just, they just don't work. Just get a dermal piercing instead. It will work so much better and it will look so much better and it will stay for so much longer and you won't have to have it looking gross. Like it doesn't feel good when your piercing looks disgusting and people are like, oh, like you want your piercings to look nice. You want them to look clean and fresh and not red and painful. Like it's, that's not like what we want to portray to the world because it like, People aren't like, oh, cool piercing. They're like, oh, Jesus, what's going on there? They're like, that is gross. And that's when people call piercings gross is when piercings look disgusting. And I get that, but this is just one that it's like, it ain't working, it ain't working now, it ain't working tomorrow. It's never going to work. Another one that I put like in the same vein as the hip piercing is the nape. The nape was a big thing back in the day as well, back, when the hip piercings were a thing, nape piercings going off. I think it was because it was one that's like, I could hide from my parents and they wouldn't actually see it. But it's kind of cool because it kind of goes in the like position where a tattoo should go. The, the shit nasty. Most of the time, very nasty because it's getting caught in the hair. People are ripping their hair off it when it gets caught. Another one that you see rejecting, looking red, looking yucky, just not a fan of being there. This is one where it's like, you should just put some dermals there. But we know that now I wouldn't do a nape. I would do dermals. Yeah, I don't know if people still doing it really. I think that's why it's super rare is because a lot of surface piercings have just been known to reject for so long that I think most people have given up on them. And like dermals are just like so much more common now that why would you even bother getting a nape surface piercing, like just silly. But people loved them. Do people still love napes? I never see them. Can't tell you the last time that someone asked for a nape piercing, like, it's unheard of. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like down below and subscribe if you're new here. And I'll be back with another piercing video next week. Bye.